So today we're going to talk about scaling um, and <coughs> T3 is a standard scaling system uh, which is given by D3 dot a D3 scaling method and then to that are chained a domain and a range and this pattern follows all the um, the different D3 scaling methods. There are many D3 scaling methods which you can see if you go to the D3 documentation we'll just flick over to it now just as soon as I set this to there we go so there are many scaling methods linear skills time skills power skills log skills um sim log scale god only knows what that is <laughs> right there there are more skills here that then really you're going to need but the most common one is scale linear and that's what we're going to look at now um, and scale ordinal. You'll also use scale band for bar charts. Use scale time sometimes for um, plots against time. But scale linear is the is the commonest and it's the easiest to understand. So double bonus. Okay. Both the domain and the range methods take arrays, and each array has a minimum value and a maximum value. It's only two uh, two values. So the domain is the original value the value you'll be getting in from your data and the uh the range is the dimensions that you have to play with so domain is where the the value originates range is where it ends up all maps go from domain to range <clears throat> so we'll put in some fun values here like we're back in school and you're making a map uh, of zero to 100 miles and your page is zero to 10 inches so this is how you calculate um we'll say a run of 10 10 units uh which we'll use a for loop to to represent and <coughs> we will log to the screen what each value map says now if you can't do this sum in your head you're going to have an awful lot of problems working um in computer programming it's it's really not difficult um but we're not we're not using it here because it's difficult we're using it deliberately because it's easy just so that you can get comfortable with the idea how the scaler works um and if this seems a little bit too obvious uh try and be patient <laughs> i think we're better being um too obvious than not obvious enough okay so to get that to work we're going to wrap it in a function called draw because index.html expects a function called draw. We're going to change our source file uh, in index.html from graph.js to scales, uh, which is just this example that we're using. Change that to scales. We open our, um, we open our terminal run the python server python dash m http dot server opens on port 8000 uh, we inspect and here is our data graphed out now you'll notice that some of the math is a little sloppy for uh for nine and for seven that's something that we're going to be looking at later on how to tidy that up. Say JavaScript was a language written in a hurry. So we're going to copy, <coughs> we're going to copy your scale method and we're going to paste it into graph uh, graph.js. Uh, and we're going to call it x scale because this is the scale we're going to use for the x axis. Now, obviously, a hundred isn't the um, isn't the maximum value of our iris. So what we're going to have in the plot is uh, from the iris that says petal length versus petal width so we need to find the maximum petal length 
um, and there's a, a shortcut method in D3 for that. It's called D3 max. So our minimum value is zero and we replace the 100 in the main, the maximum value with D3 max. D3 max takes two parameters. One is an array, which in this case is data, and the other is an, ex an accessor function, uh, which will tell D3 max which particular um, value which key in the in the array it's defined the max of so uh, d maps to d petal length is our accessor function the range again the minimum value is zero and the maximum value is going to be plot width which which I seem to have erased in the course of creating these videos going back and forth so I'm going to put them in uh, again and um, you know it, it does show the value of creating plot width and plot and plot height even though they seem obvious values um, it's just handy to have them covered under a variable name rather than having to calculate them as sub values the more variable names you have the better because it's easier to remember what's what and it's much easier on anyone that has to look at this code again figure out what it is if you have semantically meaningful names it really does people a favor um and you know we all need help in the world okay so we've got this set up and we're going to give it a run to see is it working correctly so you're going to I see the terminal still open so we're going to go over to the Fox over to console hit reload and here are our values coming up as we hoped so you see it goes um, it goes over the maximum value but that's only to be expected because there isn't a petal length as big as 10. So it's, it's just a, a quirk of the loop that I was using that I was too slothful to change, but it's fine. So you see that the, the values are increasing as they should is, is the only thing to take from that. Now, <clears throat> the next scale we're going to create is the Y scale, which is a very similar scale in all respects bar one. So it takes D3 scale linear again. The domain is zero and D3 max. That's data and petal. I always forget if it's width or height. So I'll go back and check. It's petal width. Always go back and check. It's, it's better than guessing. I was tempted to guess it's always a mistake now an interesting thing here about the range d3 counts height backwards so your range zero value is actually the plot height and the maximum value is zero so in any y in any vertical axis any y axis your scale is going to be reversed it's important to remember that we run this again and we see that the numbers are in reverse value here as they should be we also see the long trail in digits um as we've seen before that are going to be a problem later not an insurmountable problem but just something that needs tidying now having looked at our two x and y scales we have one scale left and that's the color scale and color is not a linear scale color is an ordinal scale and what ordinal means is that you have categories in the domain and categories in the range the domain categories will be the names of the iris species themselves and the range values will be color so one color per species so we'll go over to the iris data set to get the names and just fill them in
one of the problems with the uh, with the colours is that they're all purple or violet or something, uh, which is no good to us. So we're going to have to use, you know, a, a, a colour scale. And the easy thing to do is pick the obvious colours, which are red, green and blue. But you shouldn't pick red, green and blue because the designers tell me that red, green and blue don't exist in nature. And as such, they look a bit funny when you see them. You know, they're, they're a little overwhelming. So use substitute colours, something like them. Here I'm using crimson for green. Sorry, I'm using crimson for red. I'm using olive for green. And I'm using dodger blue um, for blue, which may or may not be topical as you're looking at this. Now, we could write a function here to demonstrate that this works, but uh, it wouldn't be worth the candle. It'd take us more time to work the function, to write a function, then it'll be worth because uh, you know it's just a one-on-one -on -one map and this this just gotta work um the only time a color would fail would be if there were a species that you didn't recognize but that's not going to happen here with the um with the iris data set so <clears throat> just edit out a, an extraneous uh curly brace there so we're going to save this um and now we're going to call it a day, having looked at three scales. And next time out, we're going to create an actual plot in T3 after nearly, I don't know, 40 minutes of groundwork. That's what D3 is. It's a slog, but you get to the top of the mountain uh, in the end. Take care, live long and prosper.